Today I'm with Samantha and Jose. Uh, I was talking to you guys earlier and I was explaining the purpose of my channel is prevention through awareness by you guys having the courage to share your story of how you guys ended up out here in the streets of Phoenix. You guys can help a young person that's 13, 14, 15 at home wanting to be rebellious to stay away from this lifestyle. So Samantha, how long have you been out here in the streets? Mm, about a year, year now, year and a half. Jose? About the same, about a year and a half. And a year and a half ago, what happened to cause you guys to come out here? Uh, we lost our place and then couldn't get back on because we were stuck on, stuck on drugs pretty much, stuck on the fentanyl, you know, so it's kind of hard to get back into it, get back to work and everything. It's not easy. It's not easy to just quit because you get sick out here. Withdrawals? Yeah, withdrawals and stuff. Went to rehab three times for this. Instead. You've been to rehab yeah. three times, Samantha? Yeah. And how was it? How did it go for you? It was I was good the first time I went because I was clean for like a month straight. And then I went back and started using. When you got out, what triggered you? I'd say... Well, because I started, I started a job, so having money in my hand, I was like, okay. So I, didn't, I bought weed and stuff, but then I started buying pills again. And then that's how I got back into it. That's when I was living with my sister's house. And um, how many pills are you at today? In one day, Jose, how many pills? A lot. A lot? A lot. Okay. A what lot, are, like what are, 20 to 30. 20 to 30, that's a lot for you? A I've lot interviewed uh, about 10 people yeah. uh, that have said 100 or more. I yeah. said, and they said it was only a hundred because I didn't have any more money. If I would have had more money, it'd be two hundred dollars. Right, exactly. Do you, th yeah. do you think that's true for some people? Tolerance. I mean, if I had more, yeah, if I had more money, I'd get more. You know what I mean? So I mean, it's the way it is. That's addiction, right? That's what addiction looks like. You just got to keep on getting it, and when it's gone, you got to figure out how to get more. If that's what you do every day. You just chase it. So it's, I mean, it sucks be out here in the, in the hot chasing this drug. It's not good. So. I wouldn't recommend it. It's 113 degrees. It was yesterday. It seems yeah. like it's 113 right now. Yeah, really can. hot. Yeah, we have to be in the down. shade. Yeah. You need to hydrate, steam water and and food. Yeah. But your your cycle every day is get up, wake up, make money, figure out a way to make money or, because or I, never go to sleep and just keep on going with it. Pretty much. I've heard that too. Yeah. Right. Plus, you don't want to fall asleep out here. There's weirdos and. Shit. <laughs> they do weird stuff so no no you don't want to wake up to, oh a weirdo sleeping next to you you've yeah. had that happen before yeah. oh yeah had to get in a couple fights because of it got to protect her out here so especially samantha right yeah. because exactly. they see her yeah. and just guys get creepy yeah. become inappropriate yeah. so at least she has you jose to defend her yeah. but you guys understand that ultimately it's better off the streets, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we always talk about it and try to do it. Just, it is hard though to stop just right there like that, you know? Uh, one thing I've heard uh, f from couples is that I like the companionship and the safety and, and having somebody with me, knowing that I can sleep and they're going to watch me and vice versa. Yeah. Right? But... I think we enable each other. <laughs> we don't help each other up and get out. We kind of, we just enable each other with this lifestyle. Do, do you, is, is there some truth to that within your guys' yeah. being out here? Yeah, it's true. Do you forget about being homeless when you're together? So you don't I mean, really... You kind of get used to it. You kind of get used to it. And then sometimes you remember, <clears throat> you remember, like you get back into reality, but it's just hard to get back in, you know? It's hard to start. Uh, uh, normal life out here like when you're stuck on this it's not something you could just stop right away so I mean it takes time I takes wouldn't time. recommend it anybody starting this stuff at all because it's, it's hard especially True. when you don't have no family and stuff I mean you do but like they disown you and everything so that you don't have no help you know um when I talk to people, I'll ask them, 
how does this make you feel, right, when you take it? Oh, it numbs me. It numbs all my pain. And so are you guys numbing the pain? Has there been some trauma, whether that's at your childhood, physical, emotional? The drug use, you mean? Right. Oh, yeah. It, you forget about everything. I say that all the time. Because you get, you get out here, you get depressed, especially when you find yourself uh, at night not knowing where to sleep and stuff. So it, it's depressed out here. It's depressed. You get depression. And then you just smoke your life away to forget about it. Pretty much. Samantha, when you were younger, what did you want to become as an adult? What were you hoping to, to do with your life? When I was really young, I did want to be a detective. But then I wanted to get into cosmetology. And now I know that um, doing drugs, you can't, you can't do none of that. You can't have a future that you want. It's going to be hard gonna be hard but it's worth it it's worth the sacrifice yeah. right it, it's 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 not a foregone conclusion that you'll be here forever unless that's what you want and i don't think you want that mm -hmm. for either of you you guys just have to support each other build up that courage to say you know what let's do it let's go let's go and let's go finish it and let's support each other afterwards right yeah. because one of the biggest things i hear is I've been to a treatment center 20 times, 50 times. But you know what? Every time I get out, I have no family. I burnt my bridges. They don't let me in my house in, in my house anymore because I've, I stole cars. I stole you know credit cards. And yeah. so they're scared that I'm going to do it again for a 20th time. So I have to go back to the street. And guess what? The pill is, is there. So it triggers me. So you guys have to support each other, be each other's family. And... Uh, what advice, Samantha, would you give to a 14-year-old Samantha that's at home wanting to be rebellious with 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 parents? You know, she's she, young Samantha wants to be 18, wants to be 21, wants to live older, live a fast life. Tell me, tell her about this lifestyle. Tell them about this lifestyle. I would say take it slow because it's not worth it at the end. You'll you'll mess everything up. You won't have your family no more. You won't get to do the things you did, even with your siblings. Like your sibling, it's your that could be your best friend, but then you won't have her no more. So. Do you miss your family, Samantha? I miss my sister. She's younger. Yeah, we used to talk here and there, but. I don't have a phone to get hold of her, but... If she's watching this, what message do you want to give her? That I miss her and I love her and I'm trying. Jose, what would you tell a young Jose that's 15 out there and wants to live a fast life, wants to be mature? They're in a hurry to live at an older, at an older age, but they don't understand that they're going to be in a hurry to an early grave. Take, take your time, go slow, and stay away from the bad groups, the bad people, because you can get yourself into, you know, a lot of bad stuff and end up in jail and then, you know, go down a bad road, make make better choices, and uh, just, that's pretty much it, just make better choices, because it leads to being on the streets, stuck on dope, and it, it sucks out here. Jose, what do you miss about your normal life? What do you miss the most? <clears throat> Getting up, going to work, paying my bills, and having a car and a house. Just living a regular life, being normal, not being sick, not having to worry about being sick all the time, having withdrawals. <clears throat> do you think you'll regain control of your life and have that again soon? Yeah, I have to. Because if I don't, <clears throat> I'm not going to be here no more. I'll be in prison or dead. I was just about to say that, Jose. I've interviewed hundreds of people in the past two years. And I can give you names of people that are deceased because of this. And I can give you names of people that are in prison because of this. 
They're in prison, not jail. Yeah. They're in prison. Because they, they they stayed on this path. They stayed on this road, right? It's hard. Like, you keep saying it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's not easy. I know it's not easy. Life isn't easy, right? Nobody ever said life is easy. Yeah. Life is hard for all of us. But please get the strength and courage to help each other to get out of here, okay? Yep. Uh, the Lost in Phoenix community will pray for you. We'll support you with, the, you know, we'll reach out to you. I'm going to give you my number with my card so you can call me if you guys need to write a treatment, if you guys need some food, if you need somebody to talk to. I'll try to help you guys as much as possible, okay? Right. So I want to say, Samantha, Jose, thank you guys very much for talking to me, sharing your story, opening up, and uh, really wanting to help other people to st stay away from this lifestyle, okay? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to go grab you some lunch. Lunch has been donated by my subscribers. Thank you very much. Please be safe. We'll talk soon. Thank you.